Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you anointed and appointed? Are you ready for battle? <laughs> well, you're in it. You better be. Glory to God. You know, one of the things that the Spirit has been revealing, and, and um, you know, and we talk some areas about it, and sometimes there's a little confusion of the depths of hell. And, um, and there are regions of the damned. And, and I want to bring more clarity on that area. We might have touched some of it. Because the things that we know and understand, we're able to explain better. Amen? Especially in the time of this. And so many people don't even realize that they're from the region of the damned. You and I were from the region of the damned. That means condemned to death, condemned to hell, damned, cursed. We were once under the influence of the Prince of Power of Air. Amen. And God rescued us. And if you'll turn to Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Now we know God is the last say of everything. Amen. In verse 1. Let's begin together. There is therefore now no condemnation. In other words. No sentence to be damned. <laughs> Sentenced to death. Sentenced to hell. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So here it is. The arena of those that are damned. Does anybody understand? They're damned if you're not walking according to the spirit. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in it that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? Righteous requirement. So there is a requirement. That means cooperation. Of the law might be fulfilled in us. Where? In us. Who, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. This is so vital. And if people would keep this in front of them, you know, and, and examine themselves. Am I walking according to the flesh, or according to the spirit? Am I, am I walking according to how I feel or what I think? Or am I walking according to being led by the spirit of God? Am I making my decisions according to the flesh or according to the spirit? It says, for those who live according to to the flesh, set their minds and the things of the flesh, or they set their thoughts or their hearts. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. To be fleshly minded is death. That's damned. Amen. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you can't please God, are you damned? Yes. Yes, you are. Again, it's sentenced. Those will be sentenced, damned, to condemnation, damned. And, of course, being sentenced is being sentenced to a place, a location. Remember, who you serve is what, when you die is where you go. Amen. In Matthew 23. Regions of the damned. Matthew 23, 29.
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the mon monuments of the righteous, and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you are witnesses against yourselves, that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the what? Condemnation of hell. How can you escape the sentence of hell? Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Bariah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Very, very powerful. So he says here, how can you escape the sentence of hell? Amen? Well, there's only one way out. Jesus. Luke 16. But you got to follow him. You got to be led by the Spirit. Luke 16. Verse 19. Everybody there? Let's speak it. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared every day. <laughs> Some splunciously? In other words, he was blinged. <laughs> but there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores who was laid at his gate desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores so it was that the beggar died and was carried by the what angels so either the angels come and get you or the demons do and it carried to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, which is a, another name for hell, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So in other words, in Hades, which is a location or known as hell, there were different chambers. And, and in this, so he was in torment. Amen. And, and between him, there was a big gulf. And he couldn't get nowhere. So, but he was able to see Abraham. And he cried out to Abraham. Why? Because paradise was also in Hades at that time until Jesus opened the door for them to release. Is everybody okay? Anybody okay? Praise God. <laughs> All right. Again, then he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. So he was on fire, wasn't he? Now you got to remember something. This isn't the final judgment. See, hell is not the final judgment. That's a place of torment before final judgment. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus the evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fix, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from here pass to us. So we see it known as Hades or Sheol. It's all a place of hell, a place of the damned. Everyone say damned. These are regions. But again, in the same place, there was a place of the damned and there was a place of the blessed. Amen. 
two areas, or what we might know as compartments. In Luke 23, in 39, Jesus was being crucified, and there was two thieves on both sides. It says that the, the one of the criminals who, who were hanged blasphemed Jesus, saying, if you are Christ, save yourself and us. But the other thief answering, uh, but, the, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, do you not know or even fear God Seeing you are under the same condemnation, in other words, under the same sentence. And we indeed justly, for we received the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. This was the other thief speaking. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Surely I say to you, today you will be with me where? In paradise. Where is paradise at when he's going? It's in Hades. Does everybody understand that? He didn't bring him up yet. He had to wait three days. Is everybody okay? Jesus was going. He had to go descend. Amen? Before he could ascend. All right. Let's go to First Peter chapter 3. If you recall in the Old Testament when Samuel went to the mediums and soothsayers and divination because he was trying to get a hold of, I mean not Samuel, Saul, was trying to get a hold of Samuel. And so he conjured him up. He communicated with him because Samuel was in paradise and Saul was on the earth. But he was able to communicate with him through, unfortunately, witchcraft. But God allowed it. So Sam, Samuel rebuked Saul. Because <laughs> why? Paradise was where? In Hades. It was another compartment. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. Let's speak it together. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were what? Disobedient. That means they were where? In hell. Amen? They weren't in paradise because the disobedient weren't in paradise. Were not in paradise. Amen? When once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. So we see here again that in this, Jesus descended. Amen. He preached to those that were in the region of the damned, giving opportunity to empty Hades. And close down the compartment of paradise and bring them all home to heaven in the eternal paradise. So he preached to the, even to the lost. But that's what, that's what he did, didn't he? So even when he went down there, he preached to the lost. And many of them left. Not all of them, though. Because some of them were still servants of darkness who believed in the lie of the deception of Satan, that they would have everlasting life through Satan and not through Jesus. Sounds familiar? People still believe in some of that. Now they go to Ephesians 4. And verse 8. Ephesians 4, verse 8. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captive, captivity captive and gave gifts to men. 
Now this he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? Does everybody see that? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. Again, he descended into the parts of the lower parts of the earth into hell, then ascended, releasing the captives of the dam and those who were in paradise. And of course, the dam, those who were damned and the regions of the dam were taken captive by deception. That's what the enemy does. And Matthew 27. In verse 50. Jesus was hanging on the cross and yielding up his spirit. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then the, behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And the graves were what? Opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Now these are the saints who were during Jesus' ministry. Amen. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection... They went into the holy city and appeared to many. Now, that must have freaked a lot of people. I'm sure that whole place got saved. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that? Somebody died three years ago and all of a sudden shows up. And, and everybody who did who were believers showed up. Man, that's a lot of people in that area. You know? I mean, you don't know how many, but a load of them showed up. The place must have gone crazy. I know I would have gone crazy. Graham, where you been? You know, tell me about it. I want to know everything. How is it there? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody. I mean, uh, but just think about how much information was released where they were, and how Jesus showed up and preached to them, and, and, or rescued them, and then he brought the other ones with them. But the other ones didn't. They were not resurrected. The the damned. Amen. They weren't resurrected. They were brought home. Only those that were witnesses of Christ Jesus who were accepted Jesus during his ministry on earth were the ones that were raised. Amen? In those three and a half years or three years, whatever. Hallelujah. So the graves were open. Saints, believers, during Jesus' ministry, resurrected as witnesses. And it will happen again. It's called the rapture. Because the world will see graves open. The world will see the dead rise. They might tell people that we've been taken by aliens or something, you know. <laughs> the devil's always got some kind of lie. Oh, yeah, they, were the, they might think that we were the damned. <laughs> but they don't know they're damned already. 2 Corinthians 12. So we must know if there's regions of the damned, there's regions of the blessed. Amen. Second Corinthians twelve. Verse one. Let's speak it. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the what? Third heaven. Where paradise is. I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. He was caught up to where? Into paradise. Because remember the paradise in Hades was closed. This one was open. And heard inexpressible words. Which is not lawful for a man to utter. Now. So we see here that the third heaven is known as paradise. The second heaven is the damned. That's where the powers of darkness realm. They are damned. Amen. That's a region of the damned. It's called the second heaven. 
in 2 Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. If you've ever uh, seen the documentary about, uh, it's called Police Placebo, or we call it Angels and Demons, where the pastor was taken, he went through the second heaven, he freaked out when he saw all the demonic forces. And he was protected by the angels because they wanted to destroy him. In Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, Let's speak it for if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them. That word hell there is called Tartius. It's another location in the compartments of hell. But that word, if you look it up in, in its translations here, it will tell you it's called Tartius. It's another location. For God did not spare the, them, and but cast them down to Tartius and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. So let me ask you this then. Think about this. So is the world damned? Yes. Yeah. Or else he wouldn't have destroyed it, right? And turn in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example of those who would afterward live ungodly. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, for that righteous man's dwelling is among them, tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Why? Because it is a region of the damned. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment of the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the what? Flesh. In the lust of, unclean, of uncleanness and despise authority, they are presumptuous, self-willed, and they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. This is a location of hell called Tartius, a region of the dam, awaiting, again, these are areas where there's a waiting final judgment, but in those places they are tormented. In Matthew 25, In verse 41. 25.41. And Jesus will also say to those on the left, so you don't want to be a left, do you? You think it's any coincidence about this, you know what I'm saying? Because all the left are corrupt. The promoters and voters are the things that are disgusting and, and, and that God hates. That's why they're called the left. And they're going to be left out. Then he said to all those on the left, depart from me, you cursed. So if you're damned, you're cursed. Into everlasting what? Fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in naked. You did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also, and, and they also will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison or did not minister to you? Then he will also say to them, Assuredly I say to you, in as much as you did not do it to one of these, of, of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous to where? Eternal life. So we see here that there's an everlasting fire and everlasting punishment. These are places of the damned. Amen.
Matthew, well, let's go to verse uh, 26. 25, 26. And, and his Lord said to him, you wicked and what? Lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. You ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into where? Outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now that is a place of eternal judgment. And again, he says outer darkness. You know, so many people don't realize about outer darkness. Um, and in that area, well, there is three chambers in the tabernacle. We'll talk about this here in a second, but you have the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. Anything out of the tabernacle is called outer darkness. Amen? That's why people who are living in, who live out of the um, outer court are closer to outer darkness. That's why they come and go. They're, they're, they fall, they backslide many times. They're in and out, in and out, because they're still living in an outer court, not the most holy place or the holy place. The closer you are to God, living in that tabernacle, because that's what we are. We live in the tabernacle, the secret place. We're protected. But I know other than that, the enemy's trying to draw people out, and he can, get, he can draw you out from any location. But if he can get you to the outer court, he can easily get you to outer darkness. Now, outer darkness is also known spiritually as hell, eternal hell, but also known as the earth. It's called outer darkness. It's the place of the damned. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Genesis 3. In verse 17, this is where God was placing judgment on the rebellious. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Curse is the what? Ground for your sake. So, what's he talking about? The ground, the earth, right? So that means it's if it's cursed, it's what? Damned. Amen. And toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles. It shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. That was God's judgment towards him. Amen. But in that he said, I cursed the earth. And is the earth still cursed? Yes. It's a region of the damned. That's why we must be born again. That's why we must come out of the world. That's why he says in 1 John chapter 2, let's go there. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the what? The world. Why? Because it's damned. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away because it's damned. And the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Why? Because they're the blessed. Amen. Praise God. Exodus 26. Exodus 26, verse 33. And this is when the Lord told Moses he wanted a tabernacle built. 
Why? He wanted a place of meeting. It was known as the tabernacle of meeting. You know, think about it. When the, Moses, when the Lord called Moses, you know, out of the burning bush, remember he, when he called him and Moses says, here I am, Lord, and the Lord says, yo, come a little closer, take those shoes off. Why? Because you're on holy ground now. Why? Because you're from the damned. Does everybody get this? But now you're coming on holy ground. Now you're coming on the place of blessed and life. But did God change him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was with him for 40 days and he thought it was five minutes. Hallelujah. So in this, in verse 33, he said, You shall hang the veil from the class. You shall bring the ark of the testimony in there behind the veil. The veil shall be a divider for you between the what? Holy place and the most holy place. So there's the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. That's why Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life because he's the only way out. He is the tabernacle. Now think about this. He is the tabernacle. He paid the price of being condemned for me and you. Amen? So now he is the tabernacle. Now a relationship with him brings you into a place of protection. Amen? But now that is, so we always want to maintain that relationship and be led by the Spirit and not by the flesh. We want to be the blessed, not the damned. Romans 8, verse 20. These are regions of the damned. And of course, where there's regions of the damned, there's regions of the blessed. That's why Jesus said, He who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood shall have eternal life. But people are still refusing to do that. They're still refusing to partake of his word and promises and covenant. They think that they're just good. They're going to make it. They don't realize that they're damned. Hallelujah. Romans 8. Thank God we're not Roman anymore. We know the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 20, is everybody there? Let's speak it. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also be delivered from bondage of what? Corruption. If it's corrupt, it's damned. It's cursed. And to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Not only that, but we... Also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Again, creation, bondage of corruption, it's the earth, it's damned. Revelation 20. The regions of the damned. Revelation 20, verse 1. Glory. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, place of the damned, and shut him up. Set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness of Jesus, and for the word of God. And for the what? Word of God. Who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark, or foreheads, or vaccinations, oh. or on their hands. And, 
and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, when a thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle uh, whose numbers is at the sand of the sea. They went up on the breath of the earth. They went up on the breath of the earth. Hello. And surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved. So they came from where? The damned. Does everybody see that? And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. That's a place of the dam. And brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it. From whose face the earth. Now these are, this is the final judgment. Amen. These are final judgments. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead and small and great standing before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades, or hell, delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades was cast into the lake of fire. The final judgment, and this is the second death. And anyone not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Go to um, Revelation 21, verse 6. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. And he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I'll be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. These are the regions of the damned. And I want to close at 1 Corinthians 15. So again, even hell is not the final judgment, is it? It's a place waiting for final judgment. There is no such thing as purgatory. Amen? That's the Catholicism thing. They might have considered a uh, Paradise and Hades purgatory, I don't know, but there is no place where you can work out your sins. I don't know how many push-ups you can do to get forgiven, you know? Or how many toilets you got to clean? You just got to what? Repent! Heck, if I had to clean toilets, I'd still be cleaning them. First Corinthians 15, verse 50. Thank you, Jesus, for the price you paid for rescuing our blessed assurance. Let's speak it. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trump will sound. The trumpet will sound. <laughs> so will trump sound very shortly. And the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 
So one that's corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Or hell. The sting of death is sin, and the sting and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, immovable, unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So where there's regions of the damned, there's regions of the blessed. And we are blessed. But we never want to get sucked out of the tabernacle. Amen. Don't be deceived to walk out of that place. When you get in the outer courts, scream. When you know you're in the flesh, go lock yourself up in the closet. And wait till you get back into the holy place. Amen. Praise God. Because you you're that close to the damned. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal your word tonight with the blood of Christ and bring to remembrance with full understanding that we are able to explain these things to others and hope that they would turn from the damned and be blessed in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>